We're back this Wednesday with more celebrations on our channel. We bring a list with iconic actors who passed away today, June 19th, and in the last 24 hours. In today's greetings, let us honor the extraordinary memories of stars who have unfortunately gone to rest. We still have sad news involving Ozzy Osbourne regrettable. But first, support us if the tributes to these legacies touch their lives in some way. Furthermore, we ask that you show your love and affection by giving us a positive thumbs up as a sign of respect and memories for the deceased. God bless your lives. Actor Wanderly Tribeck died on Wednesday night 18, age 73, on the north coast of Santa Catarina. He became well known as the first to play the clown Bozo in Brazil. He was admitted to the Ruth Cardoso Municipal Hospital in Balneario Camboriú after feeling ill in the morning. According to his family, he had a heart attack. Tribeck was a member of the Assembly of God in Krishima, Santa Catarina, and worked as an evangelical pastor. In an interview two years ago on the podcast Intelligentsia Ulta, Tribeck said that he received a good offer to return to play Bozo in 2017, but he didn't accept it. He explained at the time, it wouldn't be good for me to be a pastor and go back to being a clown. The Bible says, and someone is in Christ, he is a new creature. It was big money. Whoever goes to Jesus never leaves. Tribeck was the first Bozo, but not the last. The three actors who played the clown in Brazil were involved in so many dramas that a newspaper even coined the term the curse of Bozo in 1991. Tribeck suffered from alcoholism and drugs and was left by his wife in 2000. Before joining the church, he lived on the street. His trajectory is similar to that of Arlindo Barreto, who replaced his Bozo from 1982 to 1987. Barreto's wildlife during the years he played the clown inspired the 2017 film Bingo. Very sad. He was much loved and will be missed. Sincere condolences to the family at this sad time. Unfortunately, a sad death has just been confirmed this Wednesday afternoon. It turns out that 95-year-old theater director and actor Gerhard Klingenberg has passed away. The information was confirmed by the Vienna Berg Theater. Klingenberg directed the renowned Vienna stage from 1971 to 1976. Klingenberg also began directing at a young age. In 1956, Bertolt Brecht brought him to the Berliner Ensemble as an actor. After Brecht's death in the same year, his wife and ensemble director, Helene Weigel, hired Klingenberg as director. In his role as head of the Berg Theater, Klingenberg brought modern directors and plays to the Vienna Theater. Giorgio Strehler and Claus Payman, for example, directed it under his direction. Authors such as Thomas Bernhard, Harold Pinter, and Tom Stoppard were listed. Klingenberg was born Gerhard Schwabenitzky in Vienna in 1929. After World War II, he studied acting at his hometown conservatory and, at age 18, played his first guest role at the Berg Theater. After his time there, Klingenberg directed the show Spielhaus in Zurich from 1977 to 1982. From the mid-1980s to the mid-1990s, he was artistic director of the Renaissance Theater in Berlin. Very sad. The actor was much loved and will always be remembered for his iconic performances. Rest in peace in paradise. The baseball world mourned the sad passing of 93-year-old player Willie Mays, who passed away this morning. His death was announced with great sadness this Wednesday by his former team, which is now the San Francisco Giants. May's son, Michael, told the Associated Press that his father died in the presence of his family and wanted to thank his fans for their years of support. My father passed away peacefully and among loved ones. I want to thank everyone from the bottom of my broken heart for the unwavering love you have shown him over the years, he said. Mays was twice declared the league's most valuable player, MVP, and won the World Series with the New York Giants in 1954. His famous catch during the championship remains one of the most iconic plays ever seen in America's so-called national pastime. In addition to his achievements on the field, Mays embodied an attitude of just keep playing and having fun, a former player told the BBC. Nicknamed the Say Hey Kid, the center fielder was the oldest living member of the Baseball Hall of Fame. After missing the 1952 and 1953 seasons due to military service, Mays returned in 1954 to win his first MVP award. After missing the 1952 and 1953 seasons due to military service, Mays returned in 1954 to win his first MVP award. His passing is regrettable. We send our condolences to his family at this regrettable time. Rest in peace. Costume designer Anthea Silbert, aged 84, passed away this Tuesday, June 18th. Two-time Oscar nominee who worked on Rosemary's Baby, Chinatown, Carnal Knowledge, Shampoo, and Julia before becoming a studio executive and producer. Silbert partnered with two-time Oscar-winning producer Richard Silbert on eight films and with her twin brother, Paul Silbert, her first husband and another Oscar-winning production designer, on three others. In addition to Carnal Knowledge, Silbert did the costumes for director Mike Nichols in The Day of the Dolphin and The Fortune, and his Broadway plays The Prisoner of Second Avenue, the acclaimed Neil Simon comedy that bowed in 1971, 
and The Real Thing, written by Tom Stoppard, for which he received a Tony nomination in 1984. She married Paul Silbert in 1965, and they worked together on her first film, The Tiger Makes Out, directed by Arthur Hiller and starring Eli Wallach and Jackson and in her first film, Dustin Hoffman. In Europe, their brother-in-law Richard introduced them to Polanski. Silbert designed costumes for Garson Kane in Some Kind of a Nut and where it's at in a lame maze a new leaf in The Heartbreak Kid, then captured swinging Beverly Hills in 1968 with her clothes for shampoo, a tight black sequin dress used by Julie Christie in particular. We mourn her passing. We send our condolences to the family at this regrettable time. Saxophonist and singer James Chance, 71, passed away this Wednesday morning. His death was announced by his brother David Siegfried of Chicago, who did not specify the cause of death but noted that the musician's health had been declining for several years, the statement said. His last live performance is believed to have taken place in March 2019 in Utrecht, the Netherlands, according to the statement. Born James Siegfried in Milwaukee, Chance was also known as James White in his group James White and the Blacks. He also played his improvised jazz punk noise in bands such as Flaming Demonics, James Chance and Sardonic Symphonics, James Chance in Terminal City, and James Chance in Less Contortions. After playing in a band called Death in Milwaukee, Chance moved to New York and joined the band Flaming Youth in 1976. With his roommate, equally noise-friendly Lydia Lunch, he founded Teenage Jesus in The Jerks. He formed the Contortions in 1977, and they appeared on the compilation album No New York, put together by Brian Eno with great help from singer and set designer Adele Bertiae. He is survived by his mother Jean Siegfried, brother and fellow artist David Siegfried, still his wife Donna Seaman, and sisters Jill Siegfried and Mary Randy Kohler. Unfortunate. Rest in peace in paradise. The filmmaker Eric Canuel passed away this week at the age of 63. He became well known for his cult black comedy Good Cop. Attaché, a Montreal-based communications company, confirmed the news of Canuel's death to local media on Monday. It was reported that the director's cause of death was complications due to secondary plasma cell leukemia. His first feature film was a lay du porco. Pig Law, a crime drama that tells the story of two sisters who run a struggling pig farm in rural Quebec and decide to lease some of their land to a gang of marijuana smugglers. The film starred Christian Begin, Jean Nicolas Ferrault, Stephen Demers, Christopher Heyerdahl, and Marie Broussard. Canuel's other works include 2011's Barrymore, starring Christopher Plummer, Mystery Lake, 2013 and Secret Grandpa, 2017. His TV work includes CTV's Transplant and Flashpoint, and the late 90s horror anthology series Hungry. Born in Montreal in 1961, Canuel was the son of two actors, Yvonne Canuel and Lucille Papineau. He began his career in the 1980s recording music videos for artists such as Paul Pish, Sass Jordan, Norman Iceberg, Villain Penguin, and Sylvain Cossette. Very sad. We send our condolences to the family at this regrettable time. Rest in peace. Our next article is news involving one of the greatest musicians of our time, and of course you know, we're talking about Ozzy Osbourne, do you like him? What is your personal favorite song? Tell us in the comments, it's very important. The iconic Ozzy Osbourne, known as the Prince of Darkness, bravely faces health challenges following his Parkinson's diagnosis in January 2020. The legendary Black Sabbath frontman, aged 75, has undergone painful surgeries and yet continues to maintain a positive attitude, promising to return to the stage as soon as possible. In a recent interview with Rolling Stone, Ozzy shared his journey since his diagnosis. Comparing his Parkinson's to the end of a great love, he initially admitted frustration with himself, doctors and the world. However, over time, he learned to accept his condition, stating, maybe I just need to accept this fact. Despite health problems, Ozzy expressed his determination to return to the stage. He stated that he is taking it one day at a time and if he can perform again, he will definitely do so. His resilience is remarkable, inspiring fans around the world. The musician also expressed frustration with the way the media has reported his health status. He criticizes the news that associates all his gestures with Parkinson's, emphasizing that the condition does not define his life nor limit his future in music. In a humorous twist, Ozzy shared his displeasure at the idea of becoming a hologram. He ridiculed the experience of viewing a miniature hologram of Frank Sinatra, stating that such an approach is not for him. Sharon, Ozzy's wife, 
present in many difficult moments, also commented on her husband's condition. She emphasized that the journey with Parkinson's is varied, with good days and bad. Sharon highlighted the importance of understanding the many forms of the disease. And speaking of the musician, Ozzy Osbourne addressed the transformations that have occurred in the world of music throughout his 50-year career, in an interview with the American magazine Spin. Asked about the changes he has seen in heavy metal, he replied, Well, I never felt comfortable with that title they put on me, metal. Because Ozzy Osbourne plays heavy, but metal bands play much harder, and we are all put in the same category. He added, when you get into a certain genre, it can be really difficult to do something a little lighter or an acoustic track or whatever you want to do. In the past, it was always just rock. It's still just rock. Ozzy also addressed the appreciation of his work after half a century dedicated to music, I've had one of the most incredible careers any artist can have. I mean, I started in 1968 and I've been working on it ever since. It's been fantastic. I'm going to get awards left, right and center, but I don't know what to do with them. I think I was nominated for four or five Grammys this year and won two. Prevented from touring again due to his physical condition, the singer answered if there is anything he would still like to do in music. I still want to see a number one album from Ozzy Osbourne, he said, referring to the top of the Billboard Hot 200.